Hi there Cherry Pies, as promised this is the part two of the Wonder Worker Q&A for Wonder Worker Week. So basically I got some questions over on my private business Facebook group, I got some questions over on my Facebook business page and I couldn't seem to cram everything into the video that I did on Wednesday, that I put out for you guys on Wednesday. So this is the second half, hopefully I will be able to provide some more interesting answers to your questions and some insights that you can use that can be of benefit to you. I really, really appreciate you asking me some questions. It's very flattering that you would wanna know what I have to say about heart-centered business. I'm just gonna dive right in and see what I can do for you. I know you, like many others, have suffered from chronic pain and depression. How do you get through that on a day-to-day -day basis with your business? I suffer from a chronic lifelong skin disease and I'm finding it hard to find motivation and getting productive, which just makes me feel worse. How do you get yourself in the business mindset? I totally feel your pain. This is something that I've been dealing with for years and years and years, long before I started my own thing and, and was running my own business. Obviously, I had to deal with depression for the whole of my working life, those days where you just feel completely blue and you don't want to get out of bed and you know that you can't just keep taking sick days and you know that you need to kind of carry on adulting. It's very difficult and I completely appreciate and empathise with, with your position. Chronic pain as well can be a total bitch and I've definitely developed a few kind of techniques and things that I personally do that help me to hold this shit down and carry on adulting during some of my not so epic times. In the last Wonder Worker Q&A that I posted on Wednesday, I did mention on a couple of occasions that having a self-care routine that's non-negotiable is very important. And for me, I feel it's particularly important because of both my chronic pain and my depression. I feel like when I actually drop the ball and I don't do what I need to do in terms of self-care, I notice that depression does creep on and it creeps on a little bit quicker and more unexpectedly and it's more difficult for me to actually get a handle on and I feel like it starts to mess with things. And it's the exact same thing with my chronic pain if I don't keep to my self-care routine and if I don't do what I need to do to make sure that my back injury isn't becoming inflamed and that kind of thing then it can quickly creep up on me I get these issues as a result of not doing what I need to do on a daily basis so really I think the thing that has helped me the most is consistency so first of all you need to be honest about the fact that you have a condition that causes chronic pain and you need to be honest about the fact that you suffer with depression and then you need to know that ultimately you have to take accountability for maintaining a sense of control over those issues and having a handle on them and for me accountability for my issues comes with knowing that I've got to be consistent I've got to rock up on a daily basis to do what I need to do to make sure that I've got things under control and I'm maintaining a handle on the issues as they come up the minute that I drop the ball the minute that I you know have a few days where I lie in and I don't do my workouts and I I don't do what I've got to do for my mind and my body. Um, when I have a few days in a row where I'm not eating well, where I'm not leaving the house, I'm just not doing what I've got to do for myself. That's when I move into a dangerous area where in no uncertain terms, it's going to happen that either my back pain is going to start creeping up on me and I'm going to start to feel really unstable in my core physically, or the, the moody blues is going to start creeping up and I'm not going to be able to get a handle on it. I want to be really clear about the fact that I am not saying that a consistent routine of self-care that you commit yourself to daily is going to stop you from having chronic pain or stop you from having depression. I've spoken about my chronic pain at length on the channel and I've also spoken about my depression in a video as well and I definitely do recognise in no uncertain terms that I have a back problem. I have a herniated L4. It's a fact, it's not something that I can witch away, it's not something that is just going to go because I have a regular self-care routine but it's going to be definitely maintained, it's going to be within my control, it's going to be something that I can handle and likewise with the depression I definitely do believe that I'm always probably going to be prone to depression it's one of those things I've been experiencing depression to my mind in my memory consciously since I was 10 years old and it is one of those things that just comes along in waves and it's something that I've never completely been able to leave behind but the focus on on daily self-care and the daily routine definitely keeps it under control it definitely means that I don't have these times where I need to completely melt down and take two weeks off from life and just run away from everything and obviously when you run a business you can't do that kind of thing if you've got to bring in the money you know if you've got to maintain a place where you live if you've got clients if you've got an audience you really want to make sure that you can do something that makes your depression um, kind of something that you can handle something that you can rub along with rather than something that completely defeats you my self-care routine is all about the four elements so for me it's all about earth air fire and water when I'm thinking about earth in terms of self-care I'm thinking about the physical stuff so I'm thinking about the 
workout routines that I'm doing. I'm thinking about what I'm doing to make sure that my back injury remains supple and doesn't become inflamed. I'm thinking about my sleeping pattern. Um, I'm thinking about my, my bio rhythms, if you like, my sleeping, you know, my, my toilet rhythm, all of that kind of shit. I'm thinking about diet. I'm thinking about what I'm putting into my body, how much time I'm spending outside, all of that kind of thing, how I feel about myself in my physical vessel. And earth is also where I would think about things like money. Am I saving enough money? Am I spending my money on things that are making me happy? Am I investing versus wasting money? Then air would be where I look at how I'm mentally challenging myself, you know? How am I coming up with new ways to push my mind, to learn new things, to absorb new information? How am I updating my beliefs and checking in with my philosophies? How am I enjoying the business of being alive and taking on new things that I can learn about? And then water is my emotional well-being. You know, am I turning to people for support when I need it? Am I purchasing readings or sessions with my trusted people that I work with when I need them? You know, am I getting enough time at the altar? Am I listening to my emotions? Am I checking in? Am I allowing myself to cry if I need to cry? And that kind of thing. And then fire is the creative stuff. Sometimes I do put the spiritual stuff in the fire category as well, but fire is mostly, you know, the creative stuff, my passions, my tenacity, my ambition, my art. Am I letting myself express and and externalize whatever is in me? Am I grabbing life by the balls? Am I doing what I really want to do? Is the passion there? Am I, am I allowing it to kind of come through? If I look at the four elements and what they tend to represent to me, and I filter my self-care experience through each one of those four elements, then if those four elements are each satisfied in me, and I'm doing something for each of them on the daily, then I know that when depression comes along, I've got it in hand, I can deal with it. I can acknowledge it, I can identify it, but I know that it's not gonna get the better of me. And particularly with the self-care routine for my body, um, for my physical well-being, and for my diet, those things have made a tremendous difference to my chronic pain but the problem with it is that you've got to be consistent you know I notice that when I fall off the wagon for a couple of days when I don't do what I know I'm supposed to be doing when I don't do my stretches you know and all that kind of thing I notice that my back does get bad and once it gets bad it's a few days before I can get it on track again once you get that feeling that something is not right in the core and the injury is playing up it really does take a few days to get it back on track again so that's why you've got to talk to yourself about the value of consistency it's so so important and it's so annoying because it's really difficult to be consistent and to keep going with it but it's worth it I would definitely encourage you to think about the self-care routine that you want to put in place and just commit to being consistent and doing it on the daily. I would love to hear you talk on creative blocks. For me, I desire to create and my forte has been visual art. My dream since I was about four was to be an artist. I guess I'm not sure how to phrase my question, but I have a heart-centered business dream, some talent and a whole lot of block. I would love to hear your take on getting in touch with that inner spark and creating in service while not getting bogged down in aesthetic worries and overly focusing on what others may think of the product. Every artist needs an audience. How do we create from the heart for ourselves firstly and then for others? I've spoken before on the channel about the fact that I have this rule with myself that I will not produce content if it's only for my audience. So if there's something that I'm really just not there for, I'm not interested in it, it's not kind of firing the synapses for me, it's not getting me excited, I'm not going to make that piece of content um, or create that product or service just because people consistently ask me for it. It's just not what I'm about. I can't do that because I know that if I created things that were just for my audience and didn't also serve me, then I wouldn't have the longevity that I need to keep going in business. You know, the channel would not be here anymore. My blog would not be here anymore if I did things just to serve others. So I always put things through a filter of not only whether or not it can serve my audience and my clientele, but also whether or not it serves me and switches me on and gives me the chance to expand my sense of what's possible as well. So I definitely recommend putting that same lens over everything Thing that you do. Don't just do things because they're what's trending right now or you think that you know you're gonna kind of be able to expand your audience as a result of doing them but always check in with how you really feel about the idea of doing the project. Does it make you excited and how do you feel about it in your body? That's really the best way to know whether or not something is right for you as well as your audience is to really listen to your body. You know your body contains a lot of the clues that you need um, about whether or not something is the right kind of avenue for you. You've got to know that in order to be prolific 
dynamic and effectual and have longevity in your business, it's got to be something that thrills you and really, really plugs you in. And if you're thinking so much about what other people want in terms of the aesthetics of your art, you know, if you're thinking about what's trending, if you're thinking about what other people want to see at the moment or what's popular at the moment, then you've got to remember that you're not going to be able to maintain that and it's not something you're going to be able to keep doing. If you're making art from the heart, on the other hand, you are going to be able to keep doing that. That is something that you're going to be able to, to go on and do year after year consistently. And that is the foundation for a strong business. You know, that is what makes it profitable over time. That is what builds an audience around it over time. I remember I was recently watching an interview with Jack Antonov for Rolling Stone. And he was saying that in the past few years, he's had so many people come up to him and say you know I love the way that when you write songs you're really writing from this very deeply personal place you know about your own experiences with no kind of ego there and no hype there and he said that he always replies to people and says you know that's what I was always doing it's just that at this point in time at this point in the zeitgeist that kind of songwriting has become very popular but that is what I was always doing I never ever strayed from the course you know I always walked that road it's just that now it's kind of come into vogue and it's part of what people are looking for i love that because what he's basically saying is i didn't follow my nose for what was trending for what was hot right now i've always been me and i've always done this and that means that now he's created that profitability and he's created that success because he's got all of this foundation built underneath him he built it out of honesty he built it out of his in like integrity his way that he wants to come to his work and that's why he's now so successful you know obviously see behind every good man is a gorgeous woman and with Lena Dunham on side I don't think you can go wrong but that's just my opinion. <laughs> Basically what I'm saying is that you owe it to yourself to be you. If you're running around trying to fulfill the aesthetics that you think are going to appeal to other people then in the end you're going to find that you've built your business on a house of cards and, and that's that's not going to feel good and it's not going to allow you to build from the ground up and really like build your castle up into those clouds baby and have that lofty experience of success. If you want that you've got to build it on a foundation of authenticity authenticity don't be one of those people that doesn't do that you know and that's why your opinion has got to come first before the audience are even considered I'd like to know when it's okay to share pain or trauma on your journey with your followers my experience with some of the darker times in my life when is it a good time to open up about that and get a little bit personal on my channel it's inherent to my journey and why I do what I do however I'm a private person and I do have a fear of judgment I speak to my business mentoring clients about this quite often and it's come up in blog posts and it's definitely come up on the private business group from time to time and my theory that I've always held really fast to is that there's no point in telling a story if you don't know the ending if you don't know the moral of the story yet if you can't explain how it all came together in the end and how all of the threads kind of tied themselves together into this you know ending that is there that is solid don't tell the fucking story don't tell the story the story is not done yet you know it's like serving somebody a half-baked pie there's no point in doing it I talk about things that have gone on in my life and the trials and the challenges that I've been through, but I talk about it when it's all sewn up, okay? Everybody is going through things. The whole time that you're a human being and you're having this experience, you're going through shit. But the, the trick of knowing when it's right to bring that material into your business is whether or not it's done. Is it done yet, you know? Did the alarm go off it on the oven? Is the pie baked? Is the story completed? Is it published? Is it ready to be read? If you're trying to help somebody to navigate their way through something by talking about something that you are currently going through that you're still very confused by or hurt by, then it's like the blind leading the blind, isn't it? You know, you don't have a good sense of where you're leading people to. So essentially you shouldn't be leading them anywhere. When people use their own lives as material, that is very much the wounded healer philosophy and it's very much what we feel driven to do, but it's got to come from a place where you feel comfortable to talk about it. You know, it can't come from a place where it's still half-baked and you don't know what's going on with it yet. So that is the first litmus test. Ask yourself whether or not it's done for you. Is there a moral to the story? Can you tie it up neatly? Can you explain to people how you got from the beginning to the end of it and what you've learned as a result? If you can't, then the likelihood is that you're still going through it and that is okay, but you need to keep that to yourself, you know? Things like that are best kept in your personal arsenal until you're ready to release them into the world. I hope that that, is, uh, that, that makes sense and that helps you. If you could talk about tagging YouTube videos, I'd appreciate that. I watched your video on starting a YouTube channel, but I still don't have much luck with the whole tagging thing and I feel like maybe there's something I'm missing. Okay, so I asked this person to elaborate on what she meant by that and she said that um, she comes up with every single tag that she can think of but 
Um, even with all of the keywords, she feels like she's not really getting that much more reach, you know? People are not really coming to the channel more. She says, I've, I'm getting exactly the same reach and I feel like I've come up with every tag I can think of. You are not doing anything wrong. The tags are important. You need the tags because people do often use the filters to try and find videos that are relevant to what they're searching for. However, using tags alone is not gonna get you more reach. Um, that's something that I'm sorry to have to tell you. You know, the tags do not provide you with, uh, with a great deal of, of new traffic. And if that is something that I, I conveyed by accident in my, in my video about, about starting a YouTube channel and growing the audience, then I can only apologize. You know, it's, tagging is not something that I feel is absolutely intrinsic to the building of new traffic. I, I hope that what I managed to convey in my video about building a YouTube channel is that networking is really the crux of it. Networking is the heart of the operation. You've got to be um, discussing things with people. You've got to be getting into conversations. You've got to be conveying uh, how much you love other people's content and you know, so that they can come over to your channel and see that you have content. That's how it works. It's really about doing the dance with people in the online world. It's not so much about doing the tags and then expecting new traffic to come from that. The tags are very useful for people that actually utilize the filters. There are a lot of people that search through YouTube that way. And there are also a lot of people, obviously, that search for videos using the Google video um, search function. And as far as I'm aware, the YouTube tags and the Google video search function, they are linked together. So not only are you listing yourself for YouTube as making a video about whatever you've made a video about, but you're also making sure that your video is coming up on the Google video search at some point or another in, in their search function as well. That's why it's important to tag videos. However, tagging videos is not the be all and end all. The best way to get traffic and to drive people to you is to be other people's traffic and prove that, you know, you you deserve to have people come to you and listen to you and appreciate your stuff because you do the same with others as well. You know, it is a community. It's a, it's supposed to be a community vibe. It's supposed to be about us rocking up and listening to each other. Now, as somebody's channel gets bigger and as they maybe go full time with what they're doing, um, or they have a great many subscribers, obviously it's going to be difficult for them to get round and reply to all of the comments or watch all of the videos from the people who comment on their videos, but it's still important to do it. You know, I still spend quite a fair bit of time each week on YouTube watching videos from both incredibly kind of popular YouTubers that have thousands of subs and then also YouTubers that have like two videos, three videos. I literally found a woman last night who has two videos on her channel and I found her through the YouTube Pagan Facebook group and I love her stuff, you know. So you've got to really be that treasure hunter and you've got to keep going and keep finding people to play with in the YouTube sandpit and that is how you develop a engaged and connected and committed audience over time. Somebody here wants me to talk about list building. Um, how have you gone about it? Did you always have a newsletter? Where do you think most of your traffic comes from? The reason that people talk so much about list building and how important it is, is because when somebody subscribes to your newsletter list, they are telling you that they are really interested in what you're doing. So the idea is that the list is very powerful because the list is filled with the people who actually bothered to put their email address into your opt-in box and say, I want more from you. So that's the idea of the list is that there's a magical power to the list because the people that have subscribed to the list are actually saying yes I'm committed to your brand I want you in my inbox if you think about it that's actually a really big thing because most people do want less email so if somebody is subscribing to your list it means they are definitely switched on and engaged with what you're doing so that's why the list is considered to be important um, I have not done very much list building I have about 1,500 newsletter subscribers at the moment and at the moment I also do not send a regular newsletter I send things as and when I feel the urge to do so. Um, so for Valentine's Day, for, for instance, I sent um, three private videos and three private SoundCloud audio files as gifts for my newsletter subscribers. I took them on a virtual date, if you like, for Valentine's Day. And I do occasionally send sporadically and spontaneously just like private videos, unlisted YouTube goodness to my newsletter subscribers. But at the moment, I don't do anything regular. Um, the, the key business advice is that you should do something regular, that you should be sending your newsletter out once a week, once a fortnight, once every new moon or, or however you want to do it. I don't do that at the moment. It's just not what I'm doing at the moment. I'm still trying to work out exactly how I want my newsletter to be and I'm shuffling ideas around in my mind. So for now, I just tend to 
to write the odd long love letter or send the odd private video to my newsletter subscribers but a lot of people do use the newsletter for regular marketing and for me I feel like it's very important that people add themselves to my newsletter because they really are interested in my brand. Um, one way that I got a lot of people to subscribe to my newsletter actually this year was advertising to people the fact that I would be sending gifts out for Valentine's Day. I did let people know that anybody on my newsletter list was going to be receiving some private exclusive stuff for Valentine's Day. And that actually alerted a lot of people to the fact that I have a newsletter and they subscribe because they wanted to get the goodies. Um, and I think that's okay, you know, I think that's definitely something that you can do that is genuine, that is heartfelt, but that does offer people a reason to get onto your list. Um, people do do like opt-in gifts and stuff like that as well that encourages people to get onto your list. Lots of people see their list as a key marketing tool for them. I don't personally at the moment, that might change in the future, but a lot of people do think the list has real power and potency, so it's important to keep updating the people on your list with what you're doing and try and give them exclusive things. Give them things that you don't give to anybody else. Give them insights that you don't give to anybody else. Give them uh, private gifts once in a while that nobody else gets, you know, make it worthwhile to be on your newsletter. I like to think that that's what I do, even though I don't write my newsletter regularly, you know. I, I really am about giving somebody extra value so that whenever I land in their inbox, I'm not just alerting them to stuff that I've done on my blog or done on my channel. I like to think that I really do that with my newsletter list, even though I don't use it as a key marketing tool at the moment, you know. I like to think that I do always try and give people that extra stuff, um, you know, just basically give them things that they can't find anywhere else instead of just letting them know what I've recently done on my blog or my channel which they can go and find if they want to anyway I would far prefer to write them a really long kind of intimate love letter or give them a video or a SoundCloud podcast or something that nobody else has received I just think that's really exciting um, and then when you do use, use your newsletter to like market products or services you've got people's attention you know people are engaged with you they want to open your newsletter because your newsletter is always really exciting and always has something that they can dig into rather than it just being like an asinine kind of like list of the shit that you've done online anybody can go and find that so make your newsletter special whenever you do decide to send it out make it count the final question is about what kinds of business resources I can recommend what kind of like um, SoundCloud accounts, what kind of YouTube channels um, and reading resources and other things like that. I'll just mention a few things. Teresa Reed has a regular business roundup called Mad Hookups that she presents on her blog and the Mad Hookups posts always just contain the maximum amount of really cool business resources for tarot readers and mystical kind of like sellers and people of that persuasion so I'll definitely link below to Teresa Reed's website and also to a few of the most recent Mad Hookups posts you can get a flavour for what that's all about but she really does make an effort to scour the internet looking for really good articles really good free resources for people who are trying to sell their readings or trying to sell their spiritual stuff and that can be very very useful I really love looking at what she's put in the Mad Hookups uh, blog post I think that's brilliant she also just blogs quite a lot about business in a general sense about making money about integrity in business how to deal with copycats how to make more sales all that kind of thing so that's really good as well um, I would also mention Gabrielle Bernstein she does quite a lot of free business training on her channel she does like free 90 minute kind of like mastermind brainstorming sessions live sessions where she takes questions and stuff like that she's very generous with her time when it comes to speaking to people about how to maximize their potential in spiritual business and I really enjoy when I see that she's done another one of these free kind of like mastermind training workshop things I think it's really awesome everybody loves Danielle Laporte everybody loves Marie Forleo everybody loves the only door I keep an eye on all of their blogs I really love seeing what they've done and they write about making money in a soulful way and really just taking your integrity and your heart into your business and using your business as an extension of selfhood and seeing it as an extension of selfhood which I really love I really like Tara Gentile's blog I think I love what she has to say about business I really enjoy her writing one thing that I really like to do as well is watch interviews with people who have made a real dent in their field and have experienced a lot of success in their field Jonathan Fields does really great interviews with people a lot of whom I really admire and I really also love just watching motivational speeches and stuff like that if you look up Wonderlust there are lots of really awesome talks about just how to shine
online and how to be the best version of yourself and a lot of it is strictly not specifically about business but if I look for TED talks and wanderlust talks and lectures about how to fulfill your true potential and how to stand in your authenticity I can apply so much of that stuff to business and I often do because my business is so much the center of what's going on in my life and it really is the purest expression of who I am and what I believe in so when I'm looking at things that are to do with personal development I'm often connecting that stuff to my business journey which I think is a really important thing to note as well and I actually like to step away from from oversaturating myself with just business stuff I really do I like to read poetry and allow that to inspire my business I like to read about spirituality or I like to read about you know biography or whatever and allow that to instruct and inspire my business I like to write about read about figures through history and think about how their stories could influence the way that I do business I like to think outside the box quite a lot of the time and I think that saturating yourself too much with business advice can be really dangerous I very much enjoy what some of the key people People that I hang out with online have to say about business one of the first people that I ever came across that was talking about witchy business and heart-centered spiritual business one of the first people that I ever came across that was talking about witchy business was Joanna DeVoe she has an amazing series on her channel um, called biz witch and I really love what she has to say about business and about being authentic and really just taking whatever you can distill about your own self and and putting putting that into your business journey um, I did an interview with Joanna DeVoe that was kind of like a biz witch interview of sorts where we talked about the online business journey which was really cool and I'll link that below along with a few of my favourite biz witch episodes. Joanna consistently puts out really good material as well about business and about money. She's just done an ebook called The Rich Witch recently which I'll also link the details for that as well below. So she's always got a finger on the pulse. She's always writing about business and money through the lens of somebody like me who cares about integrity and who has a really really like meaningful full daily spiritual practice and Carrie Mallon is also thankfully writing like blogging much more about business now and talking about business over on Periscope she did a couple of really fucking awesome Periscope talks about business one of them was about how to leverage Instagram which I know a lot of tarot readers are really interested in um, and I'll link them below as well because they're really good you know I really love listening to both Carrie and Joanna talk about business I think it's really interesting and I always get new nuggets of stuff that I hadn't thought about quite that way before so I think Joanna definitely was the person that influenced me to eventually begin to talk about business myself and then Carrie has also really come into her own with talking about business as well and she really is definitely like a like a fizzy fresh lemonade when she talks about business and I hope that she will do so more if you guys have any um, you know, resources that you like to use for heart-centered business, um, people that really inspire you, any blogs that you love to read or channels that you love to watch, do link them below. The likelihood is that they will go into my spam for review because you've like linked kind of actual website links, but I'll go through them and I'll check them and I'll make sure that I do publish them. So if you have any suggestions that you wanna make about really great business resources that you use, do feel free to share. I'm always looking for new ones and I know other people are as well. I hope that part two of the Wonder Worker Q&A was useful to you. And until next time, my sweet little unicorns, blessed be.